Uh, my name is Mary Robson and some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, I'm not going to talk a huge amount about myself. I'm going to give slight references to the work I do, but I'm largely going to um, talk initially about the concept of gift. And um, I did write the provocation which you've hopefully all read, but um, just to remind you, and as a bit of visuals in this high-tech world we live in, um, I've put the quotes, that I will be reading them out as well, but I have put them up there. So if you want to have a good look at them at some point, you can. So the pattern of our hour is going to be that I'm going to talk for no longer than 10 minutes and then and introduce the whole subject. And then we're going to have what is called in the parlance a focused conversation. That's OK. Which um, I'm going to facilitate in a way, but the idea being that everybody gets something to say and we can all pitch in. And um, I wanted to um, give you a quote that I just read in a, uh, something this morning of somebody who, who said, you, um, those who don't observe cannot converse and I really like that and I thought there was something of that in what we've just seen that by observing and i.e. really listening to what someone else is talking about how we can absorb and learn from that as well so it's in the spirit of that that we're going to enter into the affray neither am I going to go around the circle and ask everybody to introduce themselves if that's okay because we have a relatively short length of time and, um, and uh, I don't want to necessarily just use it in that way. So I'm going to presume that everybody's going to get, get talking to each other as the day goes on. Is, is that OK with everyone? Brilliant, thank you. So I'm just going to start soon. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. <coughs> so this, my provocation was in response to the question that came from the summit, which was how do we ensure that the creative gift has relevance to a wide range of people? Should the gift be differently wrapped to achieve it? And how in a spirit, in, in a climate of challenge and constraint, we ensure that the creative spirit and gifts belong to the many, not to the few. I work um, some of the time as a, an artist and a practitioner in, by, with, for communities, using us with them. And I also work as part of a, an interdisciplinary um, department, the Centre for Medical Humanities in at Durham University. So I'm privileged to get lots and lots of the headspace to have conversations about it but also um, to get my hands dirty on a regular basis. So it's the spirit of that that I'm bringing to this, really. So in the context of community arts, and that's what we are talking about here, an understanding of the social psychology that goes into building trust and reciprocity within communities might be found in a book that predates social capital theory, and that's that book there by Lewis Hyde, already mentioned, and obviously it's been the provocation for all the provocations. Um, if you haven't read it, it's a good read, certainly the first 180 pages. The, if you're really interested in Walt Whitman and Ezra Pound, the last bit's really interesting too, but you can, you can drift off uh, <laughs> if that's okay. Um, it is a seminal work on art and the gift economy, and in it he talks a lot about the anthropological basis of gifting. So he gives really great examples from more uh, from different cultures of the importance of the gift and the importance of the gift not simply as a thing but as a spirit. The importance of something that gets sent off to a place that you don't quite know where it's going to come back from. So not simply an exchange between two people but much more interesting, if you imagine it, it's a circle between three people. So you never, you never receive from the person that you give to. Yeah. Hyde contrasts in the book the sterile um, exchanges of commodity culture with the ability of an artwork or a totem to bind a community through an evolving transit tradition of reciprocal, re 
can never say that word. I can say reciprocity, but reciprocal um, generosity. Making art work as a social gift is at the heart of thinking and practicing in community arts. A gift is not a commodity at all in the sense that its value is perceived wholly in the transmission rather than the accumulation of a good. So it's all in the act of the giving. What matters is the sentiment and the ceremony of the process. And as Hyde describes it, and this is this quote from here, when a gift passes, it becomes the binder of many wills. What gathers in it is not only the sentiment of generosity, but the affirmation of individual goodwill, making of those separate parts a spiritus mundi, that's um, a spirit of the world really, a unanimous heart, a band whose wills are focused through the lens of the gift. Thus, the gift becomes an agent of social cohesion, and this again leads to the feeling that its passage increases its worth. For in social life at least, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's, qu it's a meaty quote, that, but I hope you, you get the, the kind of very rich sense of what he's talking about, that kind of the binding of all things together. I was listening to, um, unusually actually, I don't usually get to listen to the wireless on a Monday morning, but I was in January and Anthony Gormley was on and, and so I scribbled this down as he said it. Um, he, I don't know if you know, but Gormley um, is an anthropologist by training, which I find an interesting fact once you you then look, I think, at his work through new eyes when you realise that a lot of it is informed by his knowledge around anthropology. And he said, we need a more anthropological model of what art is about. Art is a place where people can find identity, can create a sense of self together and share those products in a collective way. So that was my provocation really. So my next question was, from the viewpoint of where we are now in Kirklees in early 2012 and in particular in the field of arts and communities, where do we see those places and processes of emotional transaction through creative participation that make for genuine empowerment rather than a kind of balance sheet deduction? of how much social or cultural capital a community may possess. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that was my, that's my starting point for you really. I think from my point of view throughout my work and I do a lot of work around helping communities create traditions, create things that carry on year in year out and so in that I've had lots of experience of gifts being given and wills being bound, but also some very unhappy endings with that. You know, not being able to progress it. Or I'll give you a little example at a, in a, uh, an event, a Lanterns event, but an arts and health event up in the Northeast. Um, one day in the workshop, uh, uh, a particularly embittered member of staff said to me, why do you, why do you provide fruit for the kids? Because um, uh, they'll just, they'll take anything for nothing. And, and I said, well, because it's a gift. So why wouldn't you provide the fruit? And, and that same event, years later, ended slightly ignominiously because of one person who couldn't, who couldn't perceive, who was in a quite powerful position, who couldn't perceive the binding of the wills. That, that had gone in to making it the event that it was. So I think there are lots of ways in which gifting, I think they're complex and I think some of them aren't as positive and as jolly and as nice and friendly as could, you know, as, as you would imagine. Because you imagine a gift and you imagine it just to be a nice chummy thing that you pass around and whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, the world's a better place. Yeah. Um, but as um, 
Community is quite easy to engender, but cooperation is much more difficult. So that's my, that's my starting point. Um, I have brought a copy of the gift, which anybody is, please feel free to look at at any point during proceedings. It has still got my um, little notelets in it, which you're happy to read. Um, uh, and shall we start, shall I start you off? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to suggest that we go once round the circle. Feel free not to say anything if you don't want to. And just have a think for a start about what you've just heard about this as a provocation. And undoubtedly you'll be informed what you've just heard from there, because I'm also aware people have come from really quite an intense experience yeah. there, lobbed straight into this one. But um, let's go once round the, the circle, and just to get us going, and you don't have to think too hard, one thing that stood out for you in that provocation just one thing that you heard or something even from before that you've heard or that you've seen that has stood out for you, that you remember. Something you remember. Dare I look to my well, right? The thing that stands out for me is what you've just said about the fruit and the children. It's just absolute stand out. Yeah. What you said. Thank you. Uh, I guess keep going back to the part about the... Uh, what's, how's the phrase go again? Uh, the sum of the uh, parts is, is... No, sorry. Some of the whole is greater than the parts yeah, yeah. itself. And I think sometimes that can, that can be a difficult thing to sort of get across. Certainly uh, when sort of presenting this to people who might not kind of have a, an understanding of the arts or yeah. value it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Something that really stuck out there for me was the, the cooperation factor that you were talking about, how much harder it is. And, but if you do cooperate, you can come up with mm. something really good at the end. Of yeah. Things. You can get people yeah. 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 Thank you. I think my head's still in there. I'm yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. So I, I was really struck by the um, the film that you showed about the um, the young man with autism mm. because my nephew could have been that person sitting oh. at the keyboard, yeah. and he's. Um, He's just, I've just heard that he's got his master's in performing, oh, in music performance. Fantastic. And that could have been just. Yeah. So it's sort of, you know, it's kind of rich that, watching. And I've seen that before. I've heard Paul Robertson speak before on a number of occasions, and it's an incredibly powerful mm. thing when he plays Twinkle. And he doesn't just play it, does he? Mm. He gives it a real twinkle mm. with it. And you, yeah, you, you start to understand something of the nuance of what's going on with him, too. It's a gift. Yeah, that's good, thank you. Um, picking up on the word binding, mm. really, mm. and the way what we, what we do, what a lot of us do, is, is trying to kind of weave a connection, I suppose, between people. Yeah. Um, and create, I don't like the word cohesion, actually, but, but no. create mm. cohesion. Yeah. And it's people that wouldn't perhaps normally be cohesive. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Adele, Adele is our marvellous scribe. Scribe. <laughs> scribe. That's fine. Um, I think for me, it's uh, not expecting to be to give freely and not expect anything back. Mm. But then I also think that calls into account how do you receive things as mm. well. And so I think that's kind of you have to be willing to receive. Yeah. To be able to sort of give freely mm -hmm. and not expect anything back, almost. Mm -hmm. so it's a bit of a two-way thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. It's a good understand, understanding of psychology, the, the idea of trust within a community, which kind of follows on from that. Like, how does it work and where does it originate and how does it differ between other people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I think the thing that strikes me most is that thing about giving it being in a, in a process and not in the receiving of a tangible thing and that's something I do all the time in, the, in my practice and mm -hmm. my work and making a case for that so that there's something that's gone on in the conversation mm -hmm. with somebody that you can't always capture in an evaluation or whatever mm -hmm. but it was a it was a process and it was a creative process um, 
You mentioned something about um, an exchange not necessarily being between two people mm -hmm. and um, you know, definitely a gift not just between two people and I think that kind of picks upon collaboration and how you know, passing a gift on to one yeah. person you can then go to someone else and someone yeah. else and then how does it come back to you? Yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah, thank you. From you as value of gifts or important within the community? Yes, yeah. So the uh, gift sign of friendship. Yeah, thank you. Did, did, did you use the phrase spiritus mundi? Yeah, I did. I, I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> I'm not sure that I quite understood it, but it's something to do with the spirit of the world. I think it is. The, uh, the only other place I know that from is a W.B. Yeats poem. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think, I don't know if Yeats created it or not, to be honest. I've not delved, but that's exactly what it means, that, um, as, that it's a spirit of the world. And in that context, especially, it's especially powerful, I think, when he uses it next to the words, a unanimous heart. <coughs> you know, so that sense of heart and spirit. I, mm -hmm. I, th I think, and this is perhaps going too far, but I think for me there's a complexity about sitting spiritus mundi, a good-hearted, generous mm -hmm. spirit, mm -hmm. alongside I don't know, more Machiavellian concerns, something about, and a concern that what happens in the arts is that it's always meant to be given away for free. Yes. So, so there's a, yeah, absolutely. There's, so there's, I, it's that tension yeah. for me, I'm thinking, yeah. the tension between a, a good hearted giving spirit and one that doesn't want <laughs> the work that you do to be not about, that about value. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm thinking about the fact that some people don't want to accept a gift mm -hmm. and that that might, so that the person who's trying to give the gift and the person who doesn't want to accept it mm -hmm. is stalling mm -hmm. whatever process is mm -hmm. going on there. Mm -hmm. Suppose with the fruit reference, sort of, that the, the woman there didn't want the gift of or the idea or the whatever of mm. the project mm. um, that mm. means that maybe mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in the end and mm -hmm. that's quite an interesting mm -hmm. it is mo you think most people would want to receive but people no do, for not necessarily the reasons they don't yeah yeah thank you uh, I, I came here as a, a creative giver oh thank you complete with binding thank you that's lovely. Thank that seems you. Seems to be a theme you've already mm, mentioned. Yeah. I know a lot about your work, mm. and uh, so I think, yeah, I've come to the right place. Thank you. Um, I, I give you my creativity, my Thank photography. You. May I open it later? You can indeed. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Very kind. What about the rest of us? You've <laughs> 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 yeah. started something now. <laughs> 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 I'm going to feel special. Thank you, no, 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 no. You all feel special.